In this video, I will walk you through a logical troubleshooting procedure for a faulty integrated furnace control, or IFC. The IFC is the brain of the gas furnace, controlling many components such as the inducer, the igniter, the gas valve, and the blower. In addition, many IFCs have self-diagnostic capabilities and can provide the technician with error codes, directing them to the correct fault. Begin by clicking the start button on the phone. Next we need to go to the thermostat. Once at the thermostat, turn the selector switch to heat. This will also increase the temperature setting on the thermostat. Now we need to go to the furnace and observe the sequence of operations. As we can tell, there is no sound coming from the furnace, meaning nothing's operating. On an initial call for heat from the thermostat, the inducer should start, and we should hear that. Prior to removing the cover from the furnace and doing any troubleshooting, let's just take a quick look at the service switch and make sure it has not been accidentally turned off. In addition, we probably want to take a look at the breaker panel and make sure that a breaker is not tripped or turned off. Neither of these seem to be the case here. Next, remove the cover from the furnace and tape the door switch in. Remember, the door switch interrupts power to the furnace when the door is removed. It must be taped in when doing any electrical troubleshooting in the furnace. Due to the challenging nature of this particular fault, you may want to consult the troubleshooting flowchart. This can be accessed by clicking the top icon on the left of the page. The troubleshooting flowchart will walk us through the problem on a step-by-step -step basis. In addition, since there are many connections on the IFC, you may want to consult the color-coded wiring diagram by clicking the icon on the right of the page. This will show you where components are wired into and out of the IFC. Begin by taking the digital multimeter or voltometer out of the toolbox. Turn the selector dial to AC volts. Consulting the troubleshooting flowchart, our first step is to measure for 120 volts at the input terminals of the IFC. Click on the red lead and place it on the line voltage connection to the IFC. This is the connection coming from the door switch to the IFC. The black lead can be placed on the neutral connection over here on the right of the IFC. Again, consult the wiring diagram if necessary. Here we can see that the IFC is receiving 120 volts. Our next step is to check the 24 volt output of the control transformer. The control transformer is shown here and takes 120 volts and steps it down to 24 volts for operation of the thermostat and gas valve. To check the transformer output, we can measure with the red lead and the black lead at the R and C terminals on the low voltage terminal strip, which is located at the bottom of the IFC. We can see that 24 volts is measured here, which verifies that the transformer is operating properly. Our next step is to verify that the thermostat contacts are closed and sending power, 24 volt power, back to the IFC. Simply move the red lead from the R terminal to the W terminal to verify this. We can see that 24 volts is measured here, which verifies that the thermostat is in fact closed and sending 24 volts back to the IFC. At this point, the inducer should be running, but we know now that it's not running. Our next step is to check for 120 volts at the inducer motor. Place the meter leads at each of the glowing hot spots on the inducer motor. The red lead here goes to the hot or black wire and the black lead goes to the neutral connection at the inducer. Here we can see that there is no voltage at the inducer, which means that either the IFC is faulty, not sending power to the inducer, or simply we have a loose connection somewhere. Next we're going to remove the volt ohm meter from the circuit and tighten the connections at both the IFC and at the inducer motor. Prior to doing this, be sure to turn the disconnect switch off so that we're not putting a screwdriver on any live connections. With the power off,
click on the glowing hotspots at the inducer to tighten each connection starting with the hot connection. After all connections have been tightened, turn the power back on to the unit and see if the inducer starts. After turning the service switch back on, we can see that the inducer still is not operational. This indicates that the IFC is faulty. To replace the IFC, click on the IFC in the bottom of the furnace and click replace. This repair will cost $300 and we are going to proceed. This solves the problem of the faulty IFC. In closing, make sure you remove the tape from the door switch, you put the covers back on the unit and click on the broom to clean the work area. Good luck!